This is the Oxford EQ, a fully decramped five band parametric EQ that uses the exact same algorithms as the legendary OXFR3 digital console. It's renowned for its transparency and its incredibly low noise and distortion. It has high and low pass filters with variable slopes that go up to 36 dBs per octave. One of the great things about the Oxford EQ is it comes with four different EQ types. Let's take a look at them. So type 1 sounds a bit like uh, 80s console, a bit like an SSL 4000 for example. Its boost and cut are identical, we call it a reciprocal curve. If we move to type 2, it's similar to type 1, but you'll notice that the cut is a lot tighter than the boost. So this would be very useful for taking out problem frequencies. Type 3 is more of a British sounding curve. It sounds a bit like a Neve console, for example. And type 4 is kind of a mastering EQ. It has very, very wide curves, so it's great for gentle fills and cuts. Perfect for mastering. And finally, for HD users, there's an optional fifth EQ type, GML EQ. This is modelled on the GML 8200 classic outboard EQ from George Massenberg. Notice the centre frequency on the HF section goes all the way up to 26 kilohertz. Very, very sweet and smooth sounding. It's good for giving a little air on, on vocals. So let's have a listen to a vocal right now. I'm um, going to stick it in shelf and we'll give it, let's say, um, let's exaggerate and give it like 10 dBs of boost. The kindergartner's home from school. So here's without. I missed your mom, but it was cool. And I learned here's how with. to write my Got name. This lovely sparkle he and air to the voice. All, then runs away. You almost get used to it when you switch and it out. Neighbor it sounds a kids dull. outside are raking leaves and jumping in lovely my bit of air. apple pie. You can achieve this with the other um, EQ types, but the GML in particular is, is very, very sweet sounding. There's so a couple of controls I've not mentioned yet. The input gain, which is very useful for when I'm boosting a lot like I am here, you'll want to back off the input gain to compensate, otherwise you'll end up clipping. People just think they can boost and boost um, and get away with it, but of course you're going to overload. So always remember to back off the input gain if you're going to boost a lot. You'll also notice these AB buttons in the center, which allow two different setups to be literally AB'd. Because they're interpolated, you can automate between two different sounding EQ setups mid-track without clicks or pops. So let's have a listen to this guitar track. We've got two different EQ setups and we can A, B between the two and see which we like the best. So this is A, using type 2, switch to B. Radically different, using type 1. Very different sounding guitar. We can flick between the two, see which we like the best. There's no clicks or pops as I switch. You can even automate between the two. So it's very useful having AB buttons. OK, so finally, let's have a look at the Oxford EQ as a mastering EQ. We talked earlier about Type 4 being the best for mastering because it's got a very wide Q. So I'm just going to play a stereo mix and see what we can do with it. So first off, I'm going to use the LF section to boost a little bit. I'm going to use it as parametric, actually. Around 70, 80 hertz. I'll, get, I'll exaggerate a little bit just for demonstration purposes. I probably wouldn't boost this much normally. And I just want to roll off a lot of the real sub to clean it up. Because we're not going to need anything down there anyway. I'm using 18 dBs per octave and just something like that. So I've got a nice lift here, but then it's just rolling off all the inaudible, nasty rumbles. It should be fine. Now there's a lot of kind of boxiness here. Actually, I'm going to lower that cue because it's very wide. There's a bit of boxiness around this mid-level. I just need to create a bit of space there. So try and find it and reduce this cue. So I'm going to boost it a little bit so I can find it. It's around sort of 450, 500 hertz. Something like that, I'm going to cut that. Exaggerate it again, make a nice hole in the mid there. Just creating a little bit more space now. Yep, and we're going to use the high mids. Just going to give a slight subtle boost around 4 or 5k, just not much at all. Again, for demonstration purposes, I'll do a little bit more than I would normally. I only really want to do about half a dB. Just give it a couple of dB left. A bit too much. OK, 
Okay, so that's now created a little bit of space in the mids, giving a nice warm boost in the low. Let's compare it with flat. And now with EQ. Yeah, nicer. A lot nicer. So with very little effort, we've managed to clean up the track. Everything has its own space, sounds more rounded. So that's the much-loved Oxford EQ, very transparent, natural-sounding equaliser. So to summarise, the Oxford EQ is a five-band, fully parametric EQ with variable HF and LF filters which go up to 36 dBs per octave. Its algorithms are taken directly from the Sony OXFR3 digital console. It has four different EQ types in one plug-in. Automatable AB switches, a fully decramped HF response, and ultra-low noise and distortion.